Welcome to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show. Tune in for a vibrant mix of fashion, finance, and life's essential foundations. Join us for expert interviews, insightful discussions, and empowering insights to elevate your lifestyle. From fashion trends to financial tips and personal growth strategies, we've got you covered. So grab your headphones and get ready to be inspired. Tune in now to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show and embark on this exciting journey with us. Welcome back to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show. I'm your host, M. Teresa Lawrence. I'm here with Dylan Bruno. And when we left off, Dylan was telling us about his military service. And so continue, because yeah. I, I love military people. I just, I, like, I'm fascinated by what they go through. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I definitely went through it in the military. Um, you know, in all fairness, you know, the military, they, 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 they want a certain type of individual, okay, uh, that conforms to what, you know, what, what, what they think is a good soldier, I should say. Okay, and, and it goes so, back to the discipline yeah, you were talking about. Yeah, it goes back then. to the discipline. So you, if you go in there thinking you're okay, I'm just going to be, you know, just do what I want and just no, that's not going to happen. They'll they'll try to break you, or just you, you'll understand at some point, very early on, that you you know you're going to have to conform and you have to be disciplined mentally, as well as physically. It's not just about physical discipline. Mental, the mental part is the most important part. And yeah, but I, I was always a, a, a daredevil guy. I signed up for the infantry. You know, I, I was a guy running around with the M M60 machine guns, the 50 cal machine guns with bullets this long. Yeah, I jumped. Did out you of, take them apart? Yeah, 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 yeah you had to every, every day. But I, I'll give you one quick story. Uh, while I was in there, I had gotten a stress stress fact fracture in my uh, foot. Okay, and I couldn't walk for for, for a good little while. And every morning in, during physical training, early in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. they would you would go out to the track and work out, and run relays around the track. So I limped out there, and they they don't look on you very favorably if you're you have some kind of ailment or something mm -hmm. like that. They'll call you some of the worst names. So they called me some of those names, and I said, "Hey, I'm going to show them." So a couple uh, a few of the guys they they took off on the race doing the relay around the around the track. And I just stood there, right? I was like, man, I can't even run. Mm. They're looking at me like I'm, you know. But something snapped in me and said, I'm going to run anyway with a, with a broken foot. And I don't know. know how I feel about this right now, people. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just, just give me a second. Then. Okay. So these guys, about four of them, they, they're all the way around the track, mm. halfway around the track, and I'm still at the beginning. I took off and I beat every last one of them. Okay. Applause. I passed them all. <laughs> Okay, and I stopped, and then there was dead silence. They couldn't say anything to me, but that you know that's just a testament to you can do you can do things that you think you can't do, and you don't let anybody tell you you can't. And yeah, so jumped out of planes at night while in the rain, all that stuff. It was fun. I'm a dare, I'm a <laughs> it was fun. Okay, yeah, he I'm, jumped out of planes <laughs> at night yeah. in the rain. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a risk taker, daredevil at heart. Anyway, so it wasn't. I was jumping off of roofs when I was a kid for fun. So. So I want to go back to something you said about the military, you know, it, it's, your, it's your mental strength that gets you through that. Yeah. So all of that training, it's, it's really your thoughts and the way you handle stress mm -hmm. and look at what's happening in your life exactly. that's going to get you through it. Yeah. Can you, can you speak about that a little bit? You know, it's funny, recently I heard something very recently the other day. It said, in order for you to become great, I'm not necessarily a religious person, mm. but the quote was, in order for God to make you great, he's going to have to break you down first. And you don't have to be religious to understand that. Like, in order to grow, you're going to, you're going to have to be broken down. You're going to have to be humbled. And, you know, that's going to happen in your life. But if you know what's going on, if you know, if you know you're being humbled in order to shed certain things that will hinder your growth, then bring it on. And so that's, that's how I look at it. You know, I take every hit as a, a, um, a, a, growth, a growth serum, you know, and that's how I look at life. So I'm going to go further with you because I believe that in, when you get to a certain point in leadership, you figure out that you're actually, at some point, you're creating your own reality. Yeah. It's like everything that happens to you, you're actually creating in some way, even the hits. Yeah, because it's absolutely. gonna because it's gonna take you from where you are and pivot you to move yeah. somewhere else, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so 
you don't know when the hit's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just thought of something. It's like, okay, a, on a baseball mound, when the pitcher is pitching that ball to the batter, in order for that ball to go that far, it has to get hit, right? Yep. In order to get that home run. So, yeah, just kind of thought of that. Um, oh, I, I thought you were going to take that somewhere else. I, I thought you were going to say the batter doesn't know what is coming towards him. He doesn't know if too. it's a fastball, you know, but he's got to deal with whatever comes his way and exactly. make the best of it. So hey, I love baseball yeah, people. I love that. I do. It's true, I do. <laughs> I love analogies, metaphors. So when you got out of the military, somehow you ended up with all the trades. Yeah, I was, I was just drawn to the trades. You know, I, I, I was a meter reader for a while. Actually, I was a meter reader before I went into the military. I was just drawn to physical, physical work. So, no, but I want to know, because we were discussing something before we started taping mm -hmm. about how the trades are all gone from the schools. Yes. And are they taught in the military? Yeah, you can sign up for certain, uh, certain MOSs. What does that mean, the, MOS? Yeah, uh, well, it's like your mm -hmm. military it's, occupation. You know, okay. That's what mm -hmm. it is, whatever you do in there, whatever you sign up for. And, you know, they have different trades, you know. Mm -hmm. I, when I was young, I didn't really know what they had available. I just kind of went in. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, probably, I may have done something different if I was more aware of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah, you, you, can, you can take different trades there. But like I said, I was always drawn to just building things, like erecting structures or you know, just being a part of that whole process. And that's, that's, that's why I, I think I was drawn to the trades in general. But now the trades aren't being taught. Yeah, the trades, the trades are not, you know, but I think back in the, I don't know, they started taking the trades out of schools, I think because they wanted to promote a, another agenda, you know, going to college and, you know, because you have different, you have different agencies, financial agencies out there that benefit from, you know, going to college, like, you know, get credit, the credit, the world of credit and all that stuff. Right, debt. but there's, you know, but there's a need for mechanics. There's there a is need, a need. There's a need for welders. There's and a need for this. Exactly. There's a need for that. And I know from here that you've taught both men and women how to, how to weld yeah. and get jobs. Yeah. Speak on that. I have. Um, <clears throat> there's a big labor shortage out there right now in the, in the skilled trades world. And I was a welding instructor at a nonprofit that taught people, especially people coming out of disadvantaged situations, jail, prison, homeless, whatever, how to weld in, in about, a month's about a month's time, giving them the basic welding skills to put them out there. Not, not so much advanced welding skills, but enough welding skills that they can get certified and go get a job and then increase their education after that. And I, you know, it, it was one of the most rewarding things, rewarding things for me to do. No, I think that's beautiful because one of the problems is people get out of prison and they don't have jobs and nobody will hire them. Exactly. So that's, that's just incredible. And how did you get involved with that? Oh, well, you know, I was, I was in the trucking industry for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was a, a driver, over-the-road dr trucker for a minute. And I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do something different. I was using trucking at that, you know, it was all happening at the same time. I was using trucking to build my business to fund right, my right, own right. business. Like so, we, all, we all have a day job to fund yeah. our dream. Yeah. yeah, And that's what I did. I didn't have any investors mm -hmm. or anything like that. It was just me. Um, but I wanted to, in order to you know, increase my skills, I, I started looking for other, other means, uh, other educational avenues. And I, you know, I, I, took, I took welding on and learned pretty quickly. And then I became an instructor. And you know, like I said, it was very, very rewarding for me because a lot of people that I taught how to weld, <clears throat> they didn't have, they had, a lot of them had low self-esteem. And just by them learning that skill, I really, I saw the change right away, just by them getting a, a piece of paper that said, you know, certified, you so, know, it, it was, it was very, you know, it, it was good to see, it, I, I love seeing that. And so that's how I got into it. No, that's great. And so with the school, what would you say, you know, like your vision for the schools are? Do we put the trades back in? Do we set up new schools just for trades? Is, yeah, I, is, think, I think all of that. I think all of that will work, you know, because uh, let's face it, everybody's not necessarily college bound. And even if you are college bound, what's wrong with learning a trade or a skill that can actually, you know, reduce the debt load if you do decide to go to college, right? Some of these, you know, a certified welder can make uh, over 20, $20 an hour, 
you know, right out, right, just getting hired right off the bat, depending on where they go. And, you know, with the unions today, the, the pay scale ladder is, is so, um, I mean, it, it's so uh, beneficial in terms of how, how much they can make in, in, a, in a short amount of time versus getting a degree and being in debt and not knowing if you have, you'll have a job to even pay that debt off. Right. Um, no, I, I believe that everybody should have a few income streams. Um, yeah. that's, that's very important. And teaching people those skills is just, is just fabulous. And I believe every community should, every community, the men and women of every community should, should be able to build their own communities instead of depending on external, external factors or other individuals who may not necessarily have their interests at heart to build their own communities. So Hence that's the do it yourself. Yes. <laughs> yes. The young men in a community should be able to build that, build that community, right? Instead of not having the skills. I think it's such a shame that. The men, some, I've run across grown men who, who that never even touched, picked up a tool. And I'm like, that should be mandatory that you should know how to. Yeah. Okay. And with that, it's time for another break. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show, where we talk about food, fashion, finance, and foundations of life. We are live on KCAA Radio Broadcasting Network. KCAA is affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and NBC Sports. We are sponsored by Sheltered Studios, Fire Connect, and Building Solid Foundation. 